starting off here, this is 2.7 string methods. And as I said, um, the string class has specific methods inside of it that we can use to help look at certain portions of a string um, or then even be able to find the index uh, of certain letters within a string or the length of a string. We'll talk about all these different methods today. Um, obviously, we're not going to discuss all the methods that exist within the string class, just maybe some of the popular ones that we might use more frequently. Okay, uh, we've talked about strings already. We talked about strings in the last lesson, but it says a string holds characters in a sequence. You know, a character, uh, there are many characters that can be found very easily on your keyboard that you can type, but each character is at a position or index which starts at zero as shown below. I don't know if we've stressed this concept um, already. I'm not, I, I don't really remember what content we went through already just because I'm you know, teaching multiple classes, but computers start counting at zero, okay? Uh, typically, yes and no, if we're looking at just zeros and ones, uh, zero is typically off and one is on, okay? Um, zero is false, one is true. Yes, no. Um, and we don't have to understand all the zeros and ones and the reason we don't, we aren't learning machine language right now or assembly language. We're learning Java, which is a higher level programming language. But it is important to know that we're starting at zero. And this is important when we eventually talk about arrays as well. But just in a strings context, an index is a certain position that you can find a character at. Okay, so if we're counting at zero, this picture is a good illustration, right? This string is a collection of characters in a specific order, and each letter and each character has its own index. Okay, so starting at zero, if we want, if we want to say, hey, in this string, what's at index zero? We wouldn't just say a T, we would say a capital T. Java is case sensitive, meaning that the letter lowercase t is different from the capital T. Okay, in this string, someone decided to use a capital T, and this is a test. Notice that in index four, there is a blank space as well as in seven and nine. Okay, if I asked this to return what was at index two, it wouldn't just go th, it would go zero, one, two, and you see it as a lowercase i, okay? It says an index is a number associated with a position in a string. The length of a string is the number of characters in it, including any spaces or special characters. So if there are spaces that still is added to the length of the string. You're not just looking at the character space is a character, okay? Below, if you're looking at the length of this string, you can't just look at the last index and say, oh yeah, that's index 13. There's 13 characters in the string. That's false because we started at zero, okay? The length is going to be all the way up to the highest index plus one, okay? So the, the string below has a length of 14 characters. Okay, if you were to count it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 characters. All right. It says a string with the position index shown above each character, as we already talked about. The first character in a string starts at zero. So if you're trying to find the very first character, it would be the length minus one. It says the first character in a string is at index zero. So the last character, I'm sorry, the last character is at length minus one. Okay, so if you want to find the very last character, you have to subtract one considering we're starting at zero. Okay, for the AP exam, you only need to know how to use the following string methods. There are many different other string methods, but you only need to know these. And also on the AP exam, and, and right now this class isn't taking the AP exam, but um, the uh, AP uh, quick reference sheet is allowed to have with you during the exam, okay? Um, you get this during the exam, so you don't have to memorize them, 
but you do have to know what they do. Okay, in AP Computer Science Principles, uh, right now we're teaching this class as an honors Java class. Eventually, this will be an AP class. Okay, with um, AP Computer Science Principles, you are given an exam reference sheet as well, where you don't necessarily have to memorize a lot of the programming language syntax. You have to more know what they do. Okay, so the reference sheet is available right here if you'd like to review it. I'm going to eventually create separate resources just for the reference sheet. All right. So the different methods that exist, you have int length. Okay, the int length method returns the number of characters in the string. Okay, so if we were to run the length, it won't start counting at zero. The length will tell you how many characters actually exist within that string, including the spaces and special characters, okay? We've got a few other methods that we're gonna talk about. Uh, the substring method, which the, this method returns a new string with the characters in the current string, starting with the character at the from index and ending at the character before the to index okay so a substring you're typing in the index that you're starting with right here and then the index that you're ending with okay if you want to pull the first two characters you would type in zero okay and then identify it says from to the index if the two index is specified and sorry if the two index is specified and if not specified, okay, if it's specified, if not, if it's not specified, then it'll contain the rest of the string. So if you just add one argument and don't add the second one in, it will only accept that one parameter. All right. Um, it says ending at the character before the two. Okay. So if we want the first actual two characters, we have to have zero as your first argument that's entered in there. And then you have to have two because it's gonna go up to, it doesn't include the second one, okay? So if you just have zero one, it's only gonna return one character. If you have zero two, it returns the first two characters in that, okay? It returns zero and one. It does not return two, the number two. And we'll be using these. So talking about them is one thing and using them is another, okay? If you wanna find the specific index of, this is valuable, um, a method similar to this is valuable when dealing with arrays and, and array lists um, and different data types. It says method searches for, the searches for the string in the current string and returns the index of the beginning of the string in the current string or minus one if it isn't found. If you're comparing strings, use the compare to method. Okay, the compare to method returns a negative value if the current string is less than the other string alphabetically. Okay, so if you're comparing two strings to confirm equality, you could use the compare to um, zero if they have the same character in the same order and a positive value if the current string is greater than the other string alphabetically. We'll be using these. Uh, usually we're going to get better at these by using them. So right now we're just discussing it. This might not make sense right now. That's fine. We haven't used them yet. Okay, and then there's also an equals method that returns true when the characters in the current string are the same as the ones in the other string. This method is inherited from the object class but is overridden which means that the string class has its own version of that method, okay? That's important because the double equals to sign does not always work with all strings, okay? You wanna recognize that when comparing two strings, in many cases we will use dot equals, okay, to confirm equality. Okay, it says, 271, string methods, the length, substring, and index of. So we're going to discuss these three methods. Run the code below to see the output of the length, substring, and index of. All right, this is where we start actually looking at this. So let's look at our code. We have a main method. 
we have a message that says this is a test. We have a second message that says hello class. Message one, message two. You guys see those strings, right? If I'm just looking at this, the T is index zero, the H is index one, and you count up from there, okay? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, okay? And what this will do is this actually has a length of 14 characters, but runs zero through 13. So if we're printing out the length, our length should be 14. As you see, the very first thing it prints out is 14. And it printed out 11 as the length of hello class. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. There are 11 characters in there. We printed out the message length. Notice that we have the dot separator as well as the open parentheses and close parentheses. All right. So really that's the method that we're using attached to the string message one, and that that's inside the print line method. So a method inside of another method. Then we're using the substring method. And the substring, if we put zero, three, right, that goes and returns zero, one, and two. It does not return three. And we remember that it returns up to this value. Okay, we're not returning zero through three, we're returning zero, one, and two and stopping at three. All right, another example below, if we're looking at message one and just returning substring two to three, right, it goes zero, one, and two, we start at I, and then it stops when it gets to three. So we're just returning a lowercase I. Now, if we return, if we remember, I mentioned, and I kind of stumbled over my words as I was looking at it because I was trying to read it properly. But if we type in just one index, okay, if we're just typing in one argument that's being passed in, it will start at index five. And then if you don't actually enter a second argument, it just goes to the end of the string. So it starts at five, look, one, zero, one, two, three, four, and then this right here, five, through the rest of the length of the string, it returns is a test as it does down here, is a test. Okay. And then if we're looking at the dot index of method, we have this string message one, and we want to find the index of I S it says this will match the is in this. Okay. So it says we want the index of is. And if I'm looking at this, um, it says it returns index two. Okay. So what it does is it looks at zero one, and then it starts is looking for is, and it stops right there. It looks for, just that is value returns the index of where it starts. Okay. So it starts at index two. So it returns the first index. Now, if you look at the message, message one does not contain hello. All right. Um, one of the, one of the programs that we write in our AP Computer Science Principles class is we look at a huge string, okay? We're, we're past a string from a website and it has, you know, um, thousands of characters in it. And we wanna parse this for email addresses, okay? And if we start to identify what's in an email address, how can we, as humans, we can look at something and say, that's an email address, right? And we can also identify what's not a proper email address. But how do you signify to a computer what an email address looks like? Yes. Regular a regular expression. We start talking about regular expressions, AP computer science principles. So when we're looking at certain um, a regular expression is going to be you're looking through and finding identifying exactly what 
an email address looks like. But if I'm passing that information and we're looking at maybe specific symbols that an email address has, typically there is an at symbol. If you're typing in, a, in let's say you're going to your Gmail right now and you're typing an email address and you type an email without the at symbol, that email will not send. It will turn up red before you even type it and it'll identify this is not an email address. But what we eventually do is we parse a huge string and we're able to pull just the email addresses from it, okay? Wouldn't that be nice if you run a business and you're trying to mass email and just spam a bunch of people, right? And you could compile a bunch of email addresses. You'll probably get in trouble for spamming people's email addresses as the same way my email address is up on the athletics website, AACS, and I receive spam emails on a daily basis from all these people trying to get me to buy their softball equipment or their soccer equipment or their jerseys and all this stuff. Typically, someone will run a program that goes through and just collects all those email addresses, and then they either sell that data or they're able to use that in a way that benefits them, okay? In the age that we live in, data is money, and the more data you collect, the more valuable that we're, we are able to find trends in that data, okay? So... If we look at message one and look for the index of hello, there is no hello in there. The same as if we were to parse a bunch of data and not find an email address, okay, it would return negative one, meaning that doesn't exist in here. Hello doesn't exist. And we find the index of hello in message two. Message two starts with hello, so it returns a zero as the index of, okay? Um, we also have below, it shows two other methods, dot two lowercase and dot two uppercase. Those methods, they're not on the AP exam, but they're very useful in confirming user input or data that is being entered into a database. If you'd like to clean data, which that's sometimes a um, disputed word because if we want true data, some people say, why are you cleaning the data? Sometimes you clean the data to make it fit the database that's being entered into, um, or just being able to read it easier. You know, if we're writing a program and accepting user input, and we say, enter your name, and you enter your name in all lowercase letters, right? We want to maybe capitalize the first letter of your name, okay? So we can maybe create a string that is able to capitalize that first letter. Uh, but in this case, we're taking everything and moving it to lowercase, we can use the to lowercase method. These are powerful. Someone already wrote this code behind the scenes to do this kind of stuff for you, all right? And then we have the to uppercase. And as you see, it prints message two in all lowercase. And then you can also print it in all uppercase, right? This can avoid exceptions when writing your code, to uppercase and to lowercase if looking for equality when we eventually talk about conditional statements. Okay. It says, note, remember that substring sub from and to does not include the character at the to index. We already discussed that. Uh, to return a single character at index I, use, and then you want to add the specific index and then plus one. Okay. We're able to add one to the index number if we want just that one character. All right. Um, what is the value of POS? I'm guessing the variable is short for position after the following code executes. So we have a string called S1 and we have A, B, C, C, B, A. What is the English word that describes that? It's a, B, C, C, B, A. Such the P palindrome, right? It's read the same forwards and backwards. Notice that there are two Bs, okay? We're looking for the index of B. Do you think it's going to pull the first B or the second B? The first, because it looks, it finds it, and then it stops, okay? It doesn't look through the rest of the string, okay? We find the B, okay? So it says index of B, it's going to go zero and then one. So my guess is going to be B, and that's correct. 
what is the value of len, which is probably short for length after the code executes? String one, S1, baby, right? And then we have the length of the string. Remember the length starts at one. So one, two, three, and four, the answer is going to be C. Length returns the number of characters in the string. Okay, what is the value of S2 after the code executes? We have a string called S1. And we've assigned it the value baby again. And then we have a string called S2 that looks at S1 and creates a substring of where it starts all the way up to three. So zero, one, two, and it stops before it gets to three. So it would just be bab. And not baby, not B, not BA, it would be bab or babe if you have a long A. What is the value of S2 after the following code executes? We have string one, baby. And then we look at string one and look at the substring two. Remember, if there's only one argument that's being passed, it takes the beginning, it starts at that index and takes the rest of the string. Okay, so zero, one, two is B, and then it just goes all the way to the end, the length BY is what's left. So my answer is going to be A, B, Y. Returns everything to the end of the string if you just pass one argument in. All right. Two other methods that are in the string class, it says, uh, the compare to and equals. As I mentioned, eventually we'll talk about conditional statements. It's important we talk about this first. But if we're comparing strings, it says we can compare primitive types like int and double using operators like the double equal to or less than or greater than, uh, which you will learn about in the next unit, like I said, with conditional statements. However, String is a reference type, so you must use methods equal to and compare to, which is kind of funny because in Python, you can use the double equals to sign. In other programming language, you can use it. But in Java, okay, in Java, you cannot. Okay, in Java, you need to use dot equals or dot compare to, not double equal to or less than or greater than. Okay, it's a common mistake. Sometimes when you're switching between languages, if you know multiple languages, you might come across that. A quick Google search can answer that question though. Uh, the method compare to compares two strings character by character. It looks at two strings and if they're equal, it returns zero. And if the first string is alphabetically ordered before the second string, which is the argument of compare to, uh, it returns a negative number, okay? Uh, if the first string is alphabetically ordered after the second string, it returns a positive number. The actual number that it returns does not matter, but it's the distance in the first letter that is different. So we take a look at it. There's this little picture below. So if we use the compare to, we're comparing string one to, compare to string two. If it's the same exact string, if I'm comparing hello and hello, it will return zero in all lowercase letters. Let's say the H is capitalized for one and then not the other, then it will not return zero. It says string one before string two returns a negative number. And the string one after string two alphabetically returns a positive number. Okay, compare to returns a negative or positive value uh, or zero based on alphabetical order. Okay says the equals method compares the two strings character by character and returns true or false. Both compare to and equals are case sensitive. As I said, um, if you capitalize a letter, then it won't be the same as if nothing's capitalized. That's why the dot to lowercase and then dot to uppercase could be useful in collecting user input because users don't always type their name correctly or, or type what they're supposed to correctly. <laughs> Um, there are case insensitive versions of these methods compare to ignore case and equals to ignore case, which are not on the AP exam. There are many different methods that exist. 
that we aren't going to cover. We're going to select a few and talk about the ones that are more popular. I'm not saying these are not popular, but just these are more popular, especially when learning as a beginner. Uh, run the example below to see the output from compare to and equals since hello capitalize is would be alphabetically ordered after and compare to returns a positive number. And we'll run it so that way we can see what it's talking about. All right. <clears throat> So we have our main method, we have a string called message and it just says hello and it has an exclamation mark afterwards. And it's a system.out.println, the message, which is hello, and you're comparing to hello with an exclamation mark, um, question mark, exclamation point. Sorry, I always mix up exclamation point. Okay, so we're comparing those two together. And since they are exactly the same, right, all Characters of each index are exactly the same in the same order, it returns zero. Okay. It says compare to, if we're comparing to this message, compare to and it returned a seven. So this is where it said, um, since hello would be alphabetically ordered after and and, com and compare to returns a positive number. Since hello would be alphabetically ordered after zoo compared to returns a negative number. Notice that equals is case sensitive. Okay. If we were to type dot equals um, in as a capital, or if there were to be an equals in here, I'm sorry, we're looking at the values on the inside here. Notice that dot equals looks at capitalization as well. I plug in my computer so it does not die. We go. All right. So we're looking at does hello actually equal hello with exclamation mark? The answer is true. But notice that it does not hello with a capital H does not equal hello with a lowercase. So it would return false. As you can see, um, sometimes you might want to clean some of that data that's coming in before evaluating it. <clears throat> or just accepting a larger pool. There are lots of other methods in a string class. Um, and you can look through Java documentation or look online. It's up to you. Uh, it has a resource right here, the string class online. Now, you don't have to know all these for the exam, uh, but you can use them if you want. Okay. An API. APIs are very powerful. Uh, they just transform programming languages and make programming a lot easier. Um, it's an application programming interface. We're not going to discuss this at length. Um, I know we talk about APIs uh, and they're on the AP computer science principles exam. But when you think of an API, an API is like a library. And in that library, um, you have pre-written classes that simplify complex programming tasks for us. So uh, people have written algorithms, people have written different um, tools that are helpful to you and they would like to share, they're helpful to themselves. And then since they're helpful to themselves, they shared them and you can download different APIs that allow us to program more efficiently, okay? Rather than spending a bunch of time and you can write your own classes and share your own classes. Uh, but uh, most likely what you're trying to create has already been created and we are able to use the APIs that already exist. It says these classes are grouped together in packages. Okay. Uh, like the java.lang package that we have imported already before. Okay, we can import these into our programs and make use of them. So imagine going to a library, like a real physical library, and you see a book you like, and you walk over and you take that book off the shelf you have now import and you sit down at your desk, you checked it out from the library and you now put it on your desk. You now can use the resources inside of that book, right? Um, when I was in school, they used Harry Potter as an example, right? If you're looking in a library and there's a book full of specific spells that you want to learn, right? You take that book and you pull it and you take it home and you look through the book and you find the specific spell that you want and you recite it and you practice it, you might not need um, 
that book for every single thing or that spell for every single thing that you're trying to create. But for this one program, if it's useful, it might be important to have that book imported, okay? And the knowledge of that. So we import different packages that exist. It says, for instance, we have just discussed the string library built into the default java.lang package. It takes care of the detailed work for, for manipulating strings for us, okay? If not, I mean, you can go ahead and write your own algorithm to do the same exact thing, right? You cannot import certain classes and perform mathematical calculations, but you can probably import, um, you can import the math class in order to do calculations, perform calculations without doing a lot of the, the, the programming. Okay, the knowledge of different APIs is powerful. So there are many useful library packages as well as both in the java.lang as well as other packages. And you can always look online like what you're trying to create and you can probably find a package and APIs, different libraries um, on how to, the documentation is essential in understanding these classes. All right, I mentioned last time I saw you that strings are immutable which means they can't change. That's not the same for every programming language. Okay, in this Java programming language, strings are immutable, which means they can't change. Anything that you do to modify a string returns a new string. Okay, you cannot modify an existing string without creating a new string. I'm talking about if you wanna find like a piece of substring. All right. Look some vocab here. Uh, a new string that is part of another string with zero to all the characters copied from the original string. The number of characters in a string, the position of a character in a string, and then doesn't change. So a new string, first thing I think of is sub string. All right. Uh, the number of characters in a string would be the length of the string. The position is the index. And something that doesn't change is immutable. Let's test it. Let's see if I'm right. It says you're correct. Okay. So index, length, immutable, and substring. Okay. Drag the definition from left and drop it to the correct method on the right. Okay. It returns the position of one string in another or negative one, returns a string representing the object that is passed to this method, okay? Returns true if characters in two strings are the same, and returns a number to indicate if one string is less than, equal to, or greater than another, okay? So returns, it, I'll start with the bottom, returns a number to indicate if one string is less than, equal to or greater than, that would be compare to. Returns true if, if the characters are the same, that would be equals. Returns a string representing the object that is passed into the method. Okay, that would be two string. And then returns the position of one string in another. And that would be index of let's check and make sure i'm right equals to compare to two string index of correct all right some more questions what is the value of s2 after the following code executes we have a string called s1 create a new string um, using new okay notice we um use this way of creating a string and it says hi there all lowercase we want to find the position, we create a variable, it's an integer, and it's going to return the index of E. So I'm going to look at this, it's going to say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it should return 5. And that's going to be returned as the position. All right, so POS as a variable, the value is 5. Then we look at string, a new, a new string we're creating called S2. And we want to create a substring of our original high there. And we're going to return the substring of zero through the position five. Okay, so 
I'm gonna look at this. It's gonna go zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, it's not gonna include the fifth index. It's gonna say high and then up to index five. So zero, one, two, three, four, and it should return high space TH. Let's check it. That's correct. What is the value of S1 after the following code executes? So I have S1 is assigned the value high, capitalized H, lowercase I, capital H, lower I, lowercase I. Okay, we also have string two, S2 is a variable. And um, we have S1, we're taking high, and we are creating a substring that's going to start at zero and stop at one. Okay, so it starts at zero and stops at one. So it just gives me a capital H, right? It doesn't include one, it stops at one. So S2 is just H, okay? And it's a capital H. S3 takes my capital H and converts it to lowercase. So my capital H is now a lowercase h, and that is D. Let's test it. Oh, wait, S2, I'm sorry. S2 to lowercase. It says this would be true if the question was that, was what is the value of S3? Ah, I see, okay. So the question was, what is the value of S1? I didn't read properly. Like I said, my problem is reading. What's the value of S1 after the code executes? Okay, S1 does not change. S1 is still high. I tried to trick you. Strings are immutable. I was thinking that we were printing out S3 at the end. We weren't printing out S3. It was trying to trick us and saying, look, what's the value of S1? So the answer is A. Strings are immutable, right? I was just reading through, asked, thinking that it was asking me what S3 was. So even though we finally get to S3, notice that S2 and S1 have not changed. We've had to create a new string to take on the substring, which can become confusing if you're creating all these variables just to contain one in the end, all right? Aha, so now look at this, this is the same code. Now it's saying, what is the value of S3 after the code executes, okay? So I'll walk through it one more time. We had high, it's gonna be my same answer that I put before because I wasn't reading properly. S3, okay, we wanna see what S3 is equal to. S1 gives me high. We're taking that, just taking the capital H out of it moving that to lowercase, which is a lowercase h. So now my answer is D, okay? Make sure you read properly, unlike my example. What is the value of answer after the following code executes? We have S1, which is assigned the value high. S2, which is assigned the value by. Notice the H is capitalized, the B is capitalized. And the answer is, we're gonna compare the two strings and the answer is gonna be an integer, okay? And it's gonna return s1.compare to, we're gonna look at string one, we're looking at high, and is high, we're comparing to string two, which is by. We know it's not zero. We know it must be positive or negative. So if we look back at the compare to method, just as a refresher, okay? By looking at the compare to method, compare to, it says if S1 is before S2 alphabetically, it returns a negative number. If S1 is after S2 alphabetically, it returns a positive number. Okay, so we look at S1 and we're looking at S2. So it comes after S2 because Alphabetically speaking, H comes after B, right? After, so it should be a positive, okay? It should be a positive number. So it looks alphabetically, and since B comes before, 
it would be a positive value. <clears throat> All right, common mistakes with strings. The following code shows some common mistakes. All right. So it says the code contains some common mistakes with strings. Fix the code. All right. So usually when these happen, I'll fix like a couple at a time um, as I see them. And uh, sometimes you have to run it to see exactly what's being mistaken here because you don't always spot every single answer. Okay. It says print out the first letter. Okay. The first letter in string one. And it should give you what it is. The first letter should start at zero. All right, so substring zero to one. Okay, printing out the last character. <clears throat> um, it says printing out substring and just eight. So if I'm looking at that, it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five. We don't want that. If we want the very last character, remember we want the length minus one. Okay, so maybe we want to take str length minus one. Whatever the length is minus one to find the last character. Since if it's if it's one, two, three, four, five, six characters long. It would look for zero, one, two, three, four, five, six minus one is five. Uh, print str1 in lowercase. Will str change? Okay, so we take string one and we put it to lowercase. What we're going to have to do is, since it's immutable, we're going to have to create a new string. So maybe we say string two. And then we print out string two, since strings are immutable. Let's run it. I'm, I probably did something wrong here, but let's look at it. There were errors, see below. Java cannot find symbol, oh, I see. So str1, yep, type that variable wrong. So str1.length. Let's try again. There are errors, it says the last care in string one, string one dot length. And if you notice one thing, dot length, I need to use the dot length method. Let's take one more look. Okay, that time it ran. So the mistakes that I had made, I didn't type the right variable name. I wrote str. I included str1 and that fixed it. And then I wrote dot length without including the open and close parentheses. Make sure that you're using the proper syntax, okay? But by reading and looking at what that error was, let me just delete this again, right? If I take away those two parentheses and run it, <clears throat> reading very specifically, it says, hey, look, dot length, it's saying, Hey, um, I'm trying to convert this right now. I'm having a problem with the length. So I look specifically at length, see what's going on. Oh, I forgot the open and close parentheses, right? So I was able to go back, take a look at it, make that fix. There you go. It's okay to make mistakes along the way. Eventually the cleaner, obviously we don't want to make those mistakes the first time we write our code, but we are going to make mistakes throughout. Sometimes a dumb mistake like that. Um, being very detail oriented is important. Okay. Here's a common list of mistakes made because of strings. It says thinking that substrings include the character in the last index when they don't, right? Thinking that strings can change when they can't, they're immutable. Trying to access part of a string that is not between zero and the length minus one, as originally one of them, I think it was the very first one had zero to like eight, I believe, which would have thrown, we fixed it before it threw the error, but it would have thrown an index out of bounds exception, meaning that, hey, look, this is out of bounds. This is out of the area that you told me to look for. Trying to call a method like index of on a string method reference that is, that is null, you'll get a null pointer. It's common. 
uh, the double equal to sign uh, to test if two strings are equal. You can use it to compare if two numbers are equal to each other, but not if two strings are equal to one, one another. You have to use the equals or compare to methods instead. And then also just assuming that uppercase and lowercase high and high are the same, that different strings with different capitalization are the same. That's a common mistake. All right. Programming challenge <clears throat> it says, can you speak Pig Latin? In Pig Latin, you take the first letter and put it at the end of the word and add the letters A at the end, A-Y. For example, pig becomes igpe. Um, one, one program that we write in AP Computer Science Principles is a Caesar cipher, right? And we're able to go through and decipher as well as cipher different messages, right? We talk about encryption, decryption. Uh, Caesar cipher is very basic, but uh, create a program that takes a word that and transforms it to pig Latin using string methods. Okay, we know just in one line, we were able to determine if you didn't know what pig Latin was in one sentence, we were able to, to understand what it is. So how do we convey that to the computer? Okay, it says you need the words length, a substring that does not include the first letter and a substring, a substring that is just the first letter. You can get the whatever letter using the substring I and then I plus one. <clears throat> so for example, the letter at index three would be three, four. Uh, your teacher may ask you to create this program in a different idle or a different um, IDE. You don't need to. All right, it says use a substring method to transform a word into pig Latin where the first letter is put at the end and A is added to the end. All right, so I don't know. We're just going to create a word and we'll say umbrella because it's raining. And also because I looked at my coffee mug and I saw an umbrella. That's how, that's how deep it gets. All right, so we take the word umbrella. <clears throat> We're going to use word.substring to construct a word in pig Latin. Okay, so we're going to take, um, maybe I'll take, and I'll walk through this. I guess maybe I won't write this program in the way that I would quickly. I'll just write it. I'll write everything out. And then I'll show you different ways that you could have written it. Right, so word one, <clears throat> let's say we want to find the very first index of umbrella okay and it says we want to use you may want to use the words length and be able to find the specific letter of the very first letter u so we wanted to say m b we want to say m b r e l l a u okay and then on the end of it i don't even know how to say that out loud uh, uh, umbrella umbrella a we want to add at the end of it, we want to add a Y. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take uh, the index of the first letter. So if you look back at our methods that we use to find the index of, and I'll find it just so that way you can see it and look through it. I think it was at the very top. Okay, so remember, we looked for the index of using dot index of, and that took the first letter. So if we want to find the first letter, we would say dot index of zero, one. Scroll back down. All right. So just the first letter, and I'm just going to type this up here. It would be dot, the, the word dot index of zero, one, that will be the first letter. And so I'll just go ahead. I'm just writing comments in here. That's gonna be the first letter. And maybe I'll put it over here. And then we want to look at M. So we have M B R E L L A. That is index one, all the way 
to the length minus one. Okay, so we'll say word dot index. Um, not index of, we'll use instead of index of, we will use the method substring dot substring. So we'll say dot substring, and that's going to be characters one through word dot length minus one. Okay, and that will return. So this is going to return the first letter. This is going to return all the other letters. And then at the very end of it, we want to add on a Y. All right, so if I'm ordering these, think about it. These are all my letters. So first, I'm going to include that. Then I'm going to include the index of the first letter. And then at the very end, I'm going to tack on A. Mm -hmm. So now that we have that visual representation, I wanted to actually write that comment out and show you rather than just going through my head and constructing it. So that way we have a visual representation of it. The first thing that I wanna do is I want to take word dot, I'll take, I'll just go ahead and copy this. Word dot substring. This will return M-B-R-E-L-L-A. Okay, we already determined that. And then I'm going to concatenate that using a plus symbol. Okay, concatenate it with the first letter. And then at the very end of it, I'm going to take whatever is here, the AY, and tack it on the end, AY. All right. Uh, and then at the very end, it says the word, so umbrella in Pig Latin is, and then right in Pig Latin. Let's see if I made any mistakes. It wants me to create two substring calls. Okay, so. Oh, I see. Dot substring. I didn't have to worry about the index of. All right, I returned a one instead of, I don't know why I was even looking at that. I was thinking, I was thinking the hard way. So word dot substring zero one, word dot substring. I was thinking of a long convoluted way and I accidentally printed a one. Let's run it again. There you go, that's right. See, one quick fix make a mistake, we fix it. It happens. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Okay, so you have your word and you take whatever it starts, the second character all the way through the end of the word. That's why the first argument passed in is one and then the end is length minus one. We take on the very first letter and then we add A on the end. So if I change it instead of umbrella, um, I would say rain, right? It's raining outside. So it says rain in Pig Latin is ere. Um, another word, lunch, I'm getting hungry. And it says lunch in Pig Latin is unclay. Okay. So there you go. I'm able to complete that. A summary uh, we talked about an index, talked about length, talked about substrings, use them a lot. Just, a, uh, just in, in context as well, once again, strings are immutable. That's the reason why we couldn't just slice up this string. We had to create a new string called pig Latin. We couldn't take the word and just slice it up. Uh, we had to actually create a new string. Okay. Uh, in Python, I remember there's a chapter um, in, the, in the book that we use for AP Computer Science Principles. It's called Slicing Up Strings. Can't do that in Java. Um, the following string method and constructors, uh, sorry, the following string methods and constructors, including what they do, are used. Uh, they're in the AP reference sheet. 
but we talked about all these in the beginning. The string, okay, length, we're using the length method, substring method, um, the substring if you're only passing in one argument, um, the index, as well as equals and compare to. Okay, <clears throat> it says 276 string methods game. Try the game below, written by a teacher, Shand Shandan, Shandan Sarkar. Click on strings and then on letters. Uh, that would be the result of the string method calls. We encourage you to work in pairs and see how high of a score you can get. It says, click on strings, all right. And then on the letters, that would be the result of the string method calls. Oh, I see. So it's a little game. And I guess you set a timer if you want to. So substring 0, 1, 2, 3, and it returns IR. Okay. And then squirrel uh, substring 6. That takes it, starts at 6 and goes to length 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it would include E and L. Substring 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 would include these. Uh, aardvark would include 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Substring 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you're able to go through and play this game. A timer. I guess you can add a timer. Oh, yeah. You can add a timer. wonder what loops does. Oh, yes. Talking about loops. I love it. As a quick timer. We haven't done loops yet, so I won't add that. You can add sound to it. See what the sound does. See if it like makes a bang noise or something if you lose. Don't know what that was, but that's I guess the sound that it makes. If you get, if you the timer runs out, you can take the timer off, take the sound off. You just want to take your time through it. Um, it looks like they create a bunch of games um, to help you with strings, relational. We'll talk about relation. Uh, we'll talk about uh, comparing different uh, conditions, uh, Boolean values, loops, arrays. Cool. That's awesome. All right. It says you completed attempted 15 to 15 activities on, activity, on this, activities on this page. Completed. Well done. And that's it. And that is 2.7 string methods.